Good afternoon. As Dr. Cameron said, my name is Claire Cameron and I am the Executive Director of the Pacific Heart, Lung and Blood Institute. My topic today is the uniqueness of and the unique opportunities offered by a 501c3 nonprofit research organization. I'm often asked, what is the Pacific Meso Center? Who are the Pacific Heart, Lung and Blood Institute? How do they relate? I'd like to explain. The Pacific Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, or PHRBI as it's known, is a 501c3 research institute. PHRBI is an IRS designated medical research organization operating, operating in conjunction with at least one hospital. Through our association with Dr. Robert Cameron, who is PHRBI's scientific advisor, we support the Punch Worthington Laboratory at UCLA, and we are also affiliated with the West Los Angeles Veterans Administration Center. We're a public charity founded for public benefit. We're a state of California corporation. PHLBI was founded in 2002, and our mission is to improve the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of heart, lung, and blood diseases through independent research, collaboration, and education. PHLBI is modeled on the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute of the NIH. PHLBI is divided into divisions and centers, the heart division, the lung division, and that's where Pacific Meso Center falls under the lung division and also thymoma cancer. And we'll so shortly be doing some research on thymic cancer and blood division. Like the NIH, PHLBI has an intramural and extramural program. We have a unique intramural program and we work together with our researchers on a single scientific goal. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Who is the Pacific Meso Center, or PMC? PMC is a specialized center for mesothelioma within the division of lung research for PHLBI. Whoops. PMC is dedicated to mesothelioma research excellent, excellence, and it was established in 2009. PMC's mission is to find better treatments for malignant pleural mesothelioma and improve the quality and quantity of mesothelioma patients' lives through superior educational networking and treatment <coughs> options. PMC's research goals are to improve the quality of bench-to-bedside research through advanced cancer models. Dr. Raymond Wong spoke about his success with spheroids earlier. Intramural research means insert, it's research inside the walls of the institute. We're able to collaborate with scientists around the globe, just like the NIH. Our selected priority, priority topics of interest, which you heard today, include ex vivo models of mesothelioma, biomarkers, immunotherapy, thermal therapy, genetic expression and profiling, and tissue banking. Our intramural research program is something we pride ourselves on. We have three research scientists and we currently support two research laboratories, the Punch Worthington Laboratory at UCLA and our new laboratory which opened recently on Santa Monica Boulevard. Our scientists are Dr. Dong Mai Ho, Dr. Irina Yankulescu, and Dr. Raymond Wong. You heard today from Dr. Raymond Wong, who discussed research on developing three-dimensional tissue culture models for studying mesothelioma biology. Dr. Jan Kulesko, who is here today also, is working on characterizing the genetic aspects of these models, which Dr. Yong touched upon earlier. They will be back next year to provide research updates, which will then hopefully also be advancing towards publication and peer-reviewed scientific research. Our coordinated research program is something that is really important because it differentiates us from other nonprofits. Many nonprofits give out seed money over a couple of years. Very often, if the researcher runs out of money, the research finds itself back on the shelf. And this actually happened when I was working at the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. The researchers there were working on a drug called ST1571. They ran out of money, the drug landed up on the shelf, and Dr. Brian Drucker accidentally stumbled across it, and he was able to get the additional needed funding from the LLS, 
and the drug now, which is called Gleevec, has helped to save thousands of lives of sufferers of chronic myelogenous leukemia. This is not going to happen at PHRBI. We're not going to leave our research on the shelf. We're going to see our research through from concept to completion. Extramural research means funding outside the walls of the Institute. One of the requirements is that it must be a non-profit organization. It must fit into PHRBI's designated objectives. We have an extra funding mechanism where we're ready to collaborate with anyone who fits in with our research goals. Our current and previous grants are the Interoperative Cryoablation Development Grant that we have with the UCLA Bioengineering Department and which you heard about today from Dr. Marco Kostic, where they're developing an instrument to effectively apply the cryogenic coolant to freeze mesothelioma cells during surgery. It's really exciting to know that projects such as this one will improve the quality of patients' lives and may even re replace the need for radiation therapy following surgery. We're also providing a grant to an organization, non-profit organization, called Cancer Research and Biostatistics, CRAB, who are producing a business plan for the Admiral Zumwalt Comprehensive Mesothelioma Research and Trend Treatment Center at the VA, which I'll go into in more detail shortly. Some of the other programs we offer at PMC are a patient's roadmap, which is a comprehensive booklet written to act as a guide, a sort of GPS roadmap. It provides sufferers and their families and friends with information to help them make the many decisions that face them on their journey. The new and updated booklet will be available shortly. We do also have a first connection program which connects meso sufferers to other sufferers who are, going, who are further along on their journey and who can be a great comfort in sharing their experiences on how they coped with the treatment both physically and psychologically. Savannah Klein was hired in October last year as our medical liaison. She's a cardiothoracic nurse who's taken care of surgical chest patients and she works closely with PMC's scientific and medical advisory board. They are there to advise her on any questions that she cannot answer. Savannah's role is also educational. She holds webinars every Wednesday on topics related to mesothelioma, and she'll shortly be doing a series on Meet the Experts. She tweets constantly. She updates our Facebook and our webpage. You'll be meeting Savannah next. We're unique because we're a nonprofit foundation operating as a research organization. And we're a nonprofit operation, uh, 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 research institute operating in conjunction with hospitals. Other nonprofit research institutes do not have this connection. We're connected to the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center through our support of the Punch Worthington Lab, and we're affiliated with the West Los Angeles VA. And we're unique because we have a medical liaison program. We have a scientific and medical advisory board to help us with any questions that need answering. All funds donated are directed to the program, so money will not be wasted. And our coordinated research, which I spoke about earlier, which is so important. Like the NIH, we do coordinated research. The reason we think this is important is while other groups give out seed money for grants that are not specifically based on their overall research strategies, we direct our money into a coordinated research plan. Others give out grants in separate disconnected projects, and we use ours in a coordinated fashion so that everything fits together and none of the money gets wasted or used in a program that doesn't fit. And one of the examples is a cryoablation. Patients were being seen with a certain problem and local tumors were growing back after surgery. They were given chemotherapy, but nothing was working. Dr. Cameron felt that because surgery was not possible, he started investigating ablative theories. And Dr. Abden then started working with us. And since radiofrequency ablation, which was done everywhere and caused a severe pain in the area, he adopted cryoablation, freezing out the cells. Then he went back to the lab to see how this worked, found it worked really well, and now patients with recurring tumors have an outpatient procedure. I spoke earlier of the funding grant to CRAB. 
we're working with this non-profit to establish a business plan to present to the West Los Angeles Veterans Administration Center. This is to establish the Admiral Zumwalt Comprehensive Center for Mesothelioma Excellence and make the center available for all vets suffering with mesothelioma. Admiral Zumwalt was an American naval officer in the 70s and the youngest man to serve as chief of naval operations, but unfortunately he lost his life to mesothelioma. The family of Admiral Zumwalt has generously given permission to use their name in association with the new center. Members of our military have been placed at risk through service to their country. Over one third of those diagnosed each year with mesothelioma served in the military. Importantly, veterans who served in Iraq and other Gulf region countries have been exposed to asbestos released into the air from damaged buildings in the region. This persistent presence of asbestos in millions of homes, offices and schools from prior, prior installation and the 20 to 60 year latency period of MPM assures that this condition will remain a significant health concern in the United States, the world, and particularly within the United States military well into this century. John Johnson, who was a vet, sadly lost his life to mesothelioma. We are working with the Johnson family who have pledged a grant of $500,000 to work through PHLBI and the VA to establish the National Center of Excellence, and it will be called the Zumwalt Comprehensive Mesothelioma Center of Excellence. Dr. Cameron's team will develop a program for evidence-based clinical care and a novel virtual regionalized centralized clinical care program for veterans who have, are suspected of having, or who are at risk with MPM. One of the first projects will be an early detection breath test, which we are all very excited about. Our extramural grant to CRAB will be instrumental in our plans to have the center up and running, we hope soon. Now, the potential of the Zumwalt project will add to the overall success of our institute. Part of our success is also our great volunteers. I'm always amazed when people I meet are generous to give up their time and who want to get involved in this mission, especially when they have no connection to it. The next thing you know, their children are doing bake sales. This little girl, Akasha Ventakash, is a seventh grader at Chaminade Middle School. Her mother got involved with us on our walk last year and she joined our board as treasurer. Her little daughter was so impressed with our mission that she went back to the five members of her National Junior Honor Society. She did her homework. She went online. She found out about lots of things about it. She's probably get up here and talk to you better than me today. And they went along with her. They agreed to it. You know, they say the apple doesn't fall too far, far, fall too far from the tree. And she raised $100 last week. <laughs> we owe our success as well to the broad support from the public, the patients who donate and their family members, our generous sponsors, and our board of directors. Our international symposia, which is one of a kind, and the only symposium that focuses on lung sparing therapies for malignant pleural mesothelioma, and support from the asbestos stakeholders, the Heat and Frost Insulators Union. Doug Gamble sits on our board of directors and he is vice president of the Western States Conference of the Heat and Frost Insulators and Allied Workers. Another part of our success are the special events that we hold. It is always a great way to raise funds and awareness for mesothelioma. We're putting together a new event to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Great Escape movie, which starred Steve McQueen, who passed away from mesothelioma. Our motorcycle rally is on Sunday, September the 22nd. We're expecting between 350 to 500 bikers who will meet at the Harley Davidson shop in Marina del Rey and will be escorted on the gorgeous 65-mile route up the Pacific Coast Highway to Singapore, Sycamore Cove National Park in Malibu. And lastly, um, our, our walk, sorry. Um, our inaugural walk last year was a huge success. We had 150 walkers and we raised $67,000. So this year we want to raise more and we want to have more walkers. It's a gorgeous walk at a beautiful Paramount Ranch in Agora Hills. Um, it's lunch, a walk, entertainment, and fun for all, and a chance for everybody to sort of be with like-minded people and celebrate life. 
Dr. Cameron thanked our sponsors earlier, but I'd like to say that they are really, really important to us. They really believe in our mission. They, this is the only lung sparing symposium on lung sparing therapies, and they believe in the uniqueness of our mission, so thank you so much. Our platinum sponsors, Worthington and Carone, our gold sponsor, Napoli Byrne Ripka and Cholnick, and our silver sponsors, Lily, Simon Greenstone, Panettiere and Bartlett, and the International Association of Heat and Frost, and the Free Law Firm and Medjamine. And my thanks to UCLA as well, Vicky Sinnott Smith for all her hard work in the office of CME, Zeal TV, who are filming this today. It should be available on DVD shortly. And we have the last two years symposium at the front desk if anybody wants one. And Audio Digest, who are including this presentation on their CME audio journals. And lastly, we are unique because of our patients and their families and friends who gallantly fight the good fight. Our volunteers who give so selflessly when we need them for our fundraisers and other support tasks. Our donors who understand that our direct approach to research is the best way to make a significant impact for people suffering from this disease. Our scientists who never forget that what they do in the lab has the hopes of many. And all who attend the symposium with your dedication to educating yourselves so that you too can make a genuine difference on those who have placed their trust in you. Thank you. <laughs>